Hi everybody, my name is <laughs> Hi everybody, my name is Richard Seidlitz. I'm the owner of redpants.lol and today I'm joined by my videographer Evan who's on the front side of the camera today because we're gonna be putting our cars against each other. There are a lot of great videos out there that compare cars and talk about why you should buy one, but not a lot of them go into depth about what it's like to actually live with them. I'm talking about things like driving it on rough roads or commuting or stop and go traffic or simple tasks like getting groceries. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an apples to oranges comparison about these two cars. Mine is a 2007 Aston Martin V8 Vantage. It has a front mid-engine 4.3 liter V8. It's got a manual transmission and rear wheel drive. And this is a 2015 Audi R8 V10 Competition. It has a mid-engine in the rear and it's all wheel drive. We are going to spice this video up though. We're not just gonna compare the cars. We're also gonna do an apples to oranges comparison about steak. We've got nearly five pounds of A5 Wagyu from Japan sitting inside. We're gonna put that side by side against some American ribeyes to see how different steaks can be as well as the cars. We need to go get some American ribeyes, so let's hop in the cars and get going. So, we're sitting in the R8. Uh, this is the 2015 Audi R8 V10 competition. The competition has roughly 25 more horsepower than the R8 GT in the same year. Um, and you get all the special uh, dry carbon on the interior and uh, it comes with all the, the goodies, the sport exhaust, the carbon ceramic brakes. Um, yeah, and it's, it's just all around a really solid car. So right now, I have the car out of sport mode. It's an automatic. It is a DSG transmission. Um, so when you do want to shift quickly, it, it does. Um, so basically, uh, this car is great for just cruising around town. Um, right now it's super quiet. When the exhaust is closed up, you can't hear it at all. It's really just a really smooth, quiet ride. It's very easy to go on a road trip in. Um, great car. So if you do want to open it up, um, you can put it in manual mode by just tapping the uh, shifter here. Just push it over like that. Now I'm in manual. I control the shifting with my paddles or with the stick here and then I can put it in sport mode and that opens up the exhaust so you can get some good um, good sounds out of the car. It is a V10 and it does sound great. competitions in existence. Uh, they made 60 for the U.S. market and the U.S. market only. Um, and yeah. <laughs> okay. There it is. Test number one. Oh, barely. Barely. Oh, come on, there's plenty of space. There's not plenty of space. There's plenty. You can put the mine. beer right next to it. Look at, Look at that. that. That's Why all you it? need. I should be putting that in my car. <laughs> oh, this is messed up. Wait, we're almost full already. No way. There's no way all this could have fit in your car. If it wasn't raining, I would film me not being able to fill up your front because there's too much stuff. All right, that's about half. I don't know what he's Here's... talking about. I think there's plenty of space. In there. Behold the space. Look at that. That is a proper space. Now where you could fit a six pack in a case of water, I'm gonna take up a corner. <laughs> a corner of my trunk. And then we'll do this. We'll put that in there. Oh, I got wine too, so I guess you can, you get the beer, I get the wine. Look at that, there's hey, even the space up there. You can put the whole shopping cart in there. I can put the shopping cart in there. <laughs> I might do it just to prove it to you. All right, let's get out of the rain. We are in my 2007 Aston Martin V8 Vantage, and while we were grocery shopping, it started raining quite a bit. So if you hear any squeaking noises, I apologize, that's my feet, well, my shoes, against the pedals. If you can hear me over the squeaking, uh, we're gonna go over all the features and amenities that this car has. As you saw in Evan's R8, he's got modes and settings and all sorts of stuff you can do. 
Um, in my Aston, we have got a button that turns off traction control. That's it. <laughs> End of video. Also, since it's raining, uh, it should be worth noting, again, as we mentioned in the uh, introduction, Evan has all-wheel drive and I do not, which makes uh, driving sometimes a little crazy. We just loaded up some groceries, and I'm just going to point out again, mine has way more trunk space. You're not in it. I'm not You're in it. Not. Okay. What am I going to do? <laughs> With me, I've got a couple of friends. Michael Cobb is somebody I met a decade. I met this man online, which is a great way to start any sentence. Uh, I bought my gray Aston Martin from him 10 years ago. Uh, we became fast friends over the course of that weekend, and we visited each other probably every year since, and then I ended up moving nearby. So yeah. here he is. Luana is visiting us from Japan. She lives outside of Yokohama. Well, I guess in Yokohama, technically. Yokohama. Yep. So she's here, which is kind of a neat thing. One, because she's awesome, and two, She's got a completely different palate than the rest of us, so she can tell us what she thinks of American beef compared to Japanese beef and vice versa. Uh, she also works for Aston Martin racing team called ACR over in Japan. Um, Akane-san, thank you so much for the gifts. Thank you. I wanted to make sure that you got a big thank you. It was very awesome. We are going to do a quick cheers because we're about to have an incredible meal. So thank you guys for joining Salute. me. Evan, get in here. There we, there we go. go. All right. Salute. Ken pai, Ken pai. Um, um, Skol, that's the other one. Yeah. This is 4.77 pounds, it's over two kilograms of A5 Wagyu that came directly from Kagoshima Farms in Japan. I got this from CrowdCow. They are not a sponsor, however, there is a link in the description below where you can get some for yourself. You get a discount, I get a credit, so I can buy more meat if you buy meat. It's a great deal for everybody. Check it out. It's a service I actually use and love, and obviously, I use it quite a bit. Um, I'm gonna ch cut this thing up, and we're gonna get started. We've also got some American ribeyes here. Nice salt, pepper, and garlic on these. Nice and simple. So there's those. You can see there they've both got some decent marbling, but the marbling is completely different. On the Wagyu, I'm just gonna do a salt rub on that, maybe a touch of pepper, but it's gonna be very lightly seasoned because there's such a difference between the way the two meats taste that I want that to stand out. So this is how I do my ribeyes in general, some fresh, uh, fresh garlic with some salt and pepper, and then with my Wagyu, I always just do salt with a touch of pepper. And that's how I'm gonna do it today so we have a nice, you know, nice comparison between the two. Wash my hands just because they're gooey. Damn or anything. I don't know what that is. No, you know. We're just gonna cut this guy right in half. It's it's more done than I would like, but it's nice and soft and juicy. So we're gonna make this work. So let's go ahead. We're gonna cut these the same way as the wagyu, just to make things sort of even. And then for these, we're gonna chunk up the cap because the cap is the best part of the ribeye. For the cap, we're gonna take a couple pieces of this. <laughs> Welcome to America, where it's impossible to eat and lose weight. If anybody with a diet nutrition program thing messages me. Okay, I would make it a little more than me. Mm. All right. One, I mean, red wine. So I usually do my steaks a bit rare. This is medium. I think medium was for everybody because you like your steak overcooked. You like your steak overcooked. That's not overcooked. You like yours okay, and then I like it cooked properly. <laughs> Mooing back at you. <laughs> Round one, we're gonna do the ribeyes from the US. This is, I got it from Publix, really good quality uh, ribeyes. Luana's gonna give us her opinion on American steaks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With her mouthful. <laughs> or not. <laughs> that does not go in the video. <laughs> All right, we have got a plate of some A5 Wagyu here. Usually, when these come from Crowd Cow, they're already pre-cut. I get them in small, ready-to-cook packages. And the way that I cook them is the highest temperature that my stove will go for a minute and 15 seconds per side. That gives me a nice, rare cook, and it's good to go. This came as one big chunk, and I cut it myself, and I cut it a bit thicker a lot of it, a lot thicker than I usually have it cooked or have it cut. So 
I'm not sure how this is gonna turn out, but I'm gonna do it at a slightly lower temperature than I usually do and cook it for longer. One of the things with Wagyu is that because of how much fat is in it and marbled in and part of the steak itself is you don't need to put any butter or oil or anything else in there. One thing you can do though is you cut off a couple pieces of fat or a piece of fat, you throw it in there and you just let it render. And that becomes your oil. And that's a really damn hot stove. And when you do that, it gives you that nice oil coating. And yes, I wish I had a gas stove. I don't. I had one up in Virginia. I don't have one here. We're going to try out one of these just to see how it goes. This guy's on top. We're going to see how this works. And I have no idea how this is going to turn out. Like I said, I'm cooking this a bit differently than I usually do. You can see just how much of this is already coming out. Ow. All right, let's flip it over and see how this thing looks. It's a nice char on it. And you can see the inside is still nice and rare at this point. Oh, that's pretty. So that is a nice medium rare, which is what you guys wanted. And there's a lot more of this. This is just the first one, and we can try different ways of cooking this as you guys want. You wanted me to keep cooking it. You wanted well done. Well, oh my god, well that was medium. <laughs> that was medium. Overcooked. No. It was extra medium. No, no. No. What did you think? No. <laughs> Good. I like both. What's the difference? Wagyu, it's more soft, mm -hmm. juicy, mm -hmm. but U.S. it's like more meat. Just that for me. So you actually like the U.S. one better? Yes. If I was to say, do you want this one or the ribeye from the U.S., which one would you want? U.S. So there you have it. A bit of a difference. Mm -hmm. Michael's still over there eating both. I'm having the ribeye and it's chilled out and it's kind of cool, as in cold. It's good. But what do you think of the rip or uh, the wagon? Love it. And you cooked this last one, and you cooked it how I told you, where you just let it be rarer than you think, and mm -hmm. it comes out buttery. So I think it's the experience. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. Is it worth ten times the price? That's where we get into. Yeah. But can you eat ten times as much of it? There's also with how with how heavy this is, with all the fattiness, mm -hmm. you don't really eat that much of it. You have a few bites and it so, fills you up quickly. Let me give the comparison. If I'm out ripping through the back roads in my GTS. Oh my god. <laughs> car versus car. obviously Mike's versus. a car guy. He's a car guy. <laughs> a Bugatti Veyron? I wouldn't know, but wow. <sighs> Do I want to pay ten times that price for that Bugatti? Hmm. Okay. There. So which one is it? Would you rather oh, have the GTS or the Bugatti for 10 times? I think I'll stick with the 65 356. You slow down, you enjoy the experience. So with the third option, <laughs> which is none of the above. Okay, we found our vegan yeah, there is, as he eats his yeah, meat. As I eats his meat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's always more wine. Yeah. Anyway. That's a tough one. That's a tough there's one. There's the complete non-answer. It really comes mm -hmm. down to with the cars, with the food, with the steak, with the wine, mm -hmm. it all comes, we didn't talk about wine, which we should do one We those. didn't talk about wine, we had great wine, but I think more fun is France. So that circles back around. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, the yeah. plug, the plug, the plug. <laughs> the plug. <laughs> anyway, so there you have it. Um, mm -hmm. Cars, food, everything, it's all apples and oranges. Try everything, see what you like, and stick to what you like, and if you wanna try something different, go for it. But at the end of the day, everybody's taste is different. Whether it's an R8 or an Aston, ribeye, or, you know, an American ribeye versus Wagyu, everything is different for each person. The answer, the correct answer is, whichever one makes you happy. And that's the bottom line when it comes to everything in life. Do what makes you happy. The Wagyu made me happier. <laughs> so thank you guys for joining me, and thank you guys for joining me. Love I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. What an experience. Thanks, Rich. Whether or not we have yeah. Wagyu again, I will. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I, I love this well. <laughs> Either way, we'll see you next time.